Hello people, welcome back to the channel. It's pretty common to come across scenarios where you have charts with outlier or very large values. And just in case if the other values of the chart are very, very small, you would perhaps get a chart something like this. If you take a look at this chart, since the other values of Jan to June and other couple of months in between are so small that the large values are completely killing the small values and they're just not legible and just not visible. Hmm. Not really a good chart to read. Perhaps we can do something about the chart and make a chart something like this. In this chart, we can give a little lift off to the small values of the chart so that the small values can become slightly more significant. Something like this. Let me just give a lift and the values start to rise. Even though I can see the outliers which are highlighted in blue, I can still see that uh, the smaller values are now becoming more legible to read. Let's see if we can create a chart like this in this video. All right, quick interruption in the video. Later this month, I am actually going to be doing a live training session on Power BI. And we're going to be focusing on the hard parts of Power BI. We're going to be focusing on Power Query, Data Modeling, and DAX. If you've recently started with Power BI and you have struggled to learn Data Modeling, Power Query, and DAX in a structured way, and you need my help, you've watched the videos, you've liked the way that I teach, and you'd like to enroll for the session, this is going to be a great learning opportunity. Note that this is going to be a live training session. And if you're the type of person who would like to sit along with the trainer and you'd like to get your doubts sorted, um, you know, get your doubts clarified as you move along in the training, get some assignments right after the training session, it's going to be a phenomenal learning opportunity. Now, just two more things. There is definitely going to be a last date for the training because we are starting later this month. So check that out. And also, uh, there are 15 seats available and of which five seats have been filled up. So in case you want a spot for yourself, do not wait and just fix up a spot for yourself. That's all about it. And uh, we'll just get started with this video. All right, fellas, I'm in Power BI with a standard chart, which is where I have the outliers plotted on the chart. The first thing that I'd like to talk about is give you the logic of constructing this chart. Once you understand the logic, hopefully if there are any tweaks with your own data and your own charts, you should be able to do that. Let's start with the logic. Now, there are three moving parts that we'd have to take care in these charts that we're trying to do, the outlier charts. The first thing that we need to do is identify which of the bar is an outlier, and we need to have a logic for that. So for now, we can see that the, the month of July, the month of August, and the month of November were outliers. And we need some sort of pattern, some sort of formula for Power BI to be able to identify that which values are the outlier values. That's part one, we'll do that together. Part number two is that once you have spotted the outliers, we need to lower the significance of the outliers. What do I mean by that? Now take a look, this bar is $45,000. And because this bar is $45,000, all the other values are completely insignificant. Maybe if I just not write 45,000, but perhaps let's say I write 100 on this bar, not really 45,000, but let's just say 100 the other values are starting to get a bit of significance. So because this bar is not going to be as tall as 45,000, it'll only be 100 tall. So the other values will also start to show up a bit, right? So we need to find a way to lower the significance of the outlier bars. That's part number two. Now, once we have uh, lowered the significance of the outlier bars right here, obviously the data labels on top of the charts are going to show 100 and not 45,000 obviously. So now we need to kind of fix a way that all the data labels which are now distorted because of the uh, changes that we have made to the chart, we need to fix all the labels so that the chart still looks the way that it should look. All right. Now that the logic is out of the way, let's take a look at the data and get cracking on this chart. All right, let's just take a look at the data. I have a very simple three columnar data. We have the month, the value, and the index. The index is meant for sorting the months in the correct order. And you can see that in my data, I have you know a couple of outlier values that I would want to kind of work with. Now, there are no dimension tables. There is no other fact table that I have. This is the only table that I'm working with. You might have it, but I'm just keeping the model very, very simple. All right. Now, with this particular data, if I draw up a chart, the chart obviously looks like that. You have seen that. I'm as of now working with a simple pivot table. It just makes it convenient to work with the table, do all of your calculations in the table and push the results right back into the chart. So table is good for now. In this particular table, I need a way to be able to identify the outlier, which are the outliers. And Power BI should be able to do that automatically. There should be no manual work around that. So we need to fix a logic for that. Consider this logic. The first thing that I'm going to do is pick up the smallest value of all the months that we have. So right now you can see that we have Jan, Feb, March. And if I take a look at the smallest month, this is going to be the month of December. 
Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a logic something like this. I'm going to say that, hey, take 10, which is the smallest value, multiply that with 100. Now, if any value across all the months is greater than 1000, that is an outlier. That's what is my logic. And you could derive your own logic in some other ways, but that's the logic that I'm actually writing right now. So if any value is 100 times the smallest value, I would consider that as an outlier. And obviously, in this condition, this is going to fall trap, this is actually going to get into this condition. And this is also going to fall into the trap of the condition. Alright, let's just start to write that condition. I'm going to create a new measure. And I'm going to call this measure as a bar. What do I write in that I'm just going to say something like variable minimum value. And I'm going to say something like, hey, calculate function. Why don't you calculate the minimum value of the uh, table value column and please remove any filters from the months. So uh, all of the months and all of the index. All right, let's just take a look at this function real quick. All that I'm trying today to say is that, hey, please take a look at this particular column. And from this column, you find the minimum value, but make sure that you ignore any filter which is coming from the month column. Since the index, sorry, since the month column is sorted by the index, I'm also including that column in here. Okay. Now, the result that I expect to see with this particular measure is that all across the months, I need to see the minimum value. So minimum value, just going to drag that, press enter, and I drag that value to my chart. And across all the values right here, I get to see 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. But I don't really want to see 10. I want to see 10 times 100. So let me just multiply that with 100 and I press enter, that becomes 1000. Now, let's just compare every single value to 1000 and see that are you an outlier or not? All right, I'm just gonna maybe say something like, uh, if the total value is greater than uh, this particular condition that we have, if the total value is greater than 1000, then mark that as a true, that means you are an outlier. Let me just commit to this, and you can see that we get three outliers right here, true, true, and true, and this is going to maybe start to work in our favor. All right, now what do we want to do with the outliers? Now certainly the second part of the logic that we're trying to build is that once we have been able to identify the outliers, I don't really want 45,000 to be presented in the chart because the time you put 45,000 in the chart, the rest of the values are so small that obviously they are going to look very, very insignificant. So I would want to scale down 45,000 by a large factor. Let's just try to do that. I'm gonna say something like this. I'm just gonna say something like, Let's just return an if function. So I'm just going to say if this particular condition is true, then what I would want is I would want the total value to be divided by a very large number. Consider 500, right? So 45,000, uh, let's say maybe 600. So when 45,000 is divided by 600, the value that you get is 90 and 90 is going to be displayed right here, not 45,000. All right. And otherwise, I just want to show my total value. All right. So this particular total value is nothing but for the outliers and outliers, all the outliers are going to get divided by 600. All right. I press enter and you can see that I do not really get uh, 90, but I get 75 here because 45,000 divided by 600 is 75, not really 90. Sorry about that. All right. So now that we have the outliers presented right here and the total and the bar value. Now, if you try, try to draw a chart, the chart is going to look something like this. Let me just kind of come out of it and cancel the total value right here. And on this bar uh, measure that I have written, let me just try to draw a chart. So if I just go here and try to draw a simple chart right here, and you can see that the chart looks pretty good. And all of the values have now got a bit of significance because we have now scaled down the 45,000 to show just 75. Now this is obviously a wrong chart and you can't really present this particular chart. So we need to work with this chart in terms of formatting. What we need to do is we need to highlight the outliers a bit differently and they should not look the same as the other regular values. The second thing is that the label is bad. So this should not really say 75. They should actually still say 45,000 and they should still say 42,000. They should still say 40,000, right? That's the thing that we need to do. The other thing that we need to do is that this particular scale that we have done, which is as of now constant to 600, but maybe you would want to have a control on how much you want to scale up or scale down the value. To be able to do that, I have created a simple table. That table is going to give you the optionality of moving the slicer and then controlling the scale. All right. How do we do that? If you take a look at this particular table, where are you scale table? So I have made a very simple scale table. 
and the values in the scale table are 1, 100, 200, and so on and so forth. And these are the values that I get in the scale table. Now, this scale table is going to be used to create a simple slicer. So let's just do that. I'm just going to go over to the slicer right here and create uh, the value. And I get a slicer like this. Now, once I get the slicer, now this particular slicer, let's just also say that this is going to be a less than slicer. Now, this slicer is not really talking to this particular visual as of now. Even if you move the scale, it's not really doing anything. So what we need to do is this particular value that is captured right here, I need to capture this value and I need to push this value inside of the chart to only which values to only the uh, outliers right here. That's the, all, the, the thing that I would want to do. How do I do that? I'm just going to come back to my bar right here and I'm just going to maybe start to write a simple formula right here. I'm just going to say something like minimum of the scale. Sorry, where is that scale table? And uh, that's the value. All right. I think a max would work. So the function that we're trying to use is not the main function, but the max function. All right. So once we actually uh, write the formula, which is the max function, you can see that now you're able to control how much scale would you want to give to the values which are smaller than in the chart. And you can see that completely the formatting has disturbed. And now the next part is to format this chart so that it looks very, very presentable. All right, part three, formatting, and especially formatting the labels that appear on the top of the chart. If you take a look at the chart, the chart looks good for now, but the problem is that 90 should not go as a label, 45,000 should go as a label on top of this chart. The problem is, however, that in Power BI, you have no control over customizing labels. The labels are defaulted by the values that appear in the chart. To be able to have more granular control over labels, I'm going to use a tool called Tabular Editor and start to create calculation groups, which are going to give me the property of uh, formatting the particular calculation that appears in the chart. You will see one side to it. Now, if you don't really know how do you work with calculation groups, I have done a very extensive video on calculation groups and you should take a look at that. But for now, I will jump over to Tabular Editor. All right, in Tabular Editor, I have already created a calculation group real fast. Uh, right click on the tables right here, create new and a calculation group. This creates this particular calculation group, which in my scenario, I called it as labels. Once I created the calculation group, I right clicked on the calculation group, said create new, and I wanted to create a calculation item in that calculation group. Once I did that, I called that particular calculation item as a label. Now, I'm absolutely fine to just run the current calculation, the one that I have written, which is my bar measure, but I would want to display something else on top of that bar measure. To be able to fiddle with the property of the formatting, I will just change this property from expression to format screen, string. Now, once I'm there in the format string, I'm going to say something like this. I'm going to say that although you are going to run the selected measure, whatever measure that I have written, but I would want you to display the total value instead on top of the current calculation. So it's going to start to show 45,000 and not really the current value. So and the other things are just to make it work. So 45,000 is just going to be displayed with a little bit of comma separation. And you'd have to write double quotation marks for this thing to be able to work. Now, once you are done with this, I suggest that you save the calculation group that you have created. It's going to refresh in Power BI. And once you're back in Power BI, you'll be able to take a look at the calculation group that we have created. The one that we have created is label. Now, this produces the name column and I'm just going to get the name column and create a slicer on top of that. I just bring that name column right here and I create a slicer with that name column right here. Now, what happens once you click on the slicer? If I click on the slicer, what is going to happen is that I will still see uh, the value as 90 or the bar length as 90, but the value on top of this is going to appear as 45,000. Sweet. Now, the only thing which is remaining is that the axis is not correct. But since we don't really want to have the axis, there are data labels on top of this, we can just get rid of the axis. And once you kind of format this out and just make it pretty and all of that kind of stuff, this entire chart is going to look something like this. Now, certainly in this particular chart, what I have additionally done to highlight the outliers is also done a bit of conditional formatting work. I'm going to show you the measure that I have used in conditional formatting. So in conditional formatting, I have used this particular measure and I'm saying that if you are an outlier, 
then in that scenario I would want you to color uh, as blue but if you're not an outlier then I would want you to color as this particular grayish, grayish style color all right once you have done the conditional formatting and you've decided what color would you like to use for your outliers then this particular measure is going to decide what color are you going to put in the chart so I'm just going to jump over to the chart get to data colors and in here I'm just going to use that particular bar conditional formatting measure that I just showed you right here and that's it once you're done this looks pretty damn awesome so if you would want to increase the significance you can increase that um, and the bars stand up and if you would want to decrease the significance you can also do that all right people that's been it let me know in the comments what do you think about this and if you find this particular technique useful for any outlier charts that you might have in the end a big shout about my upcoming live power bi training program that is just happening about in a week if you're interested to learn from me the hard parts of power bi tax power query and data modeling i highly recommend that you take a look at the training session it's going to be super super awesome to meet you in the training session and that's all about it. Let me know if you have any questions around this and I will be glad to reply. Thanks so much for watching this all this while and I will catch you in the next one.